Hi, my name is Linda, and welcome to the Cozy Christian Soul. Before we get started today on our Bible study on this Friday, um, we are going to open with prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, as we come to you in the name of Jesus, thank you for this privilege to come together and study the Bible, and we just thank you and praise you, and I pray for an anointing upon me, an anointing upon each one of us listening to this Bible study today, that we will learn from the prophet Amos, and will warn the people that judgment is coming. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today we're going to be studying one of my very favorite of the Old Testament prophets, and that is Amos. And we're going to start out here and read in Amos chapter 7, verses 14 and 15. Then answered Amos and said to Amazah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said unto me, Go, prophesy unto my people in Israel. Now, I love Amos because, first of all, he was a shepherd. And uh, as you know, I love sheep. And I love um, the, just the idea of being a shepherd. I always say when I get to heaven one day, that I hope that the Lord puts, if we have jobs in heaven, I hope that the Lord puts me in charge of some sheep because I, it would be a life's ambition to be a shepherdess. And, uh, but what I love about Amos also is that he was an ordinary person. Now, when we think of prophets, we think of someone otherworldly, you know, that they have been set apart um, you know, all of their life and prepare for this. Well, so was Amos, uh, because um, it, as a shepherd, uh, Amos knew about oh, taking care of the sheep and warning them about wolves and uh, protecting them. And that's what a prophet does. He warns the people about false prophets about the consequences of sin. And sometimes a shepherd has to teach a hard lesson to the sheep. Um, but, you know, the, the, but the shepherds, the, uh, the greatest of the Old Testament prophets, as I have said before, uh, Isaiah, uh, you know, they think he was related to King Isaiah. Uh, so, you know, John the Baptist uh, was from a priestly line. And so the prophets were all usually uh, chosen for a very particular reason. And so Amos was very unusual. He was just, a, had spent all of his life as a shepherd and as a gatherer or a pruner of sycamore fruit. And of course, we know the importance that the Bible puts on pruning us that we may gather more fruit also. Uh, the men who were prophets uh, were not popular. Uh, I, in, I mentioned this in Tuesday's Bible study, that people like when you tell them little comfortable stories or uh, you know something that's easy to digest and simple and they can go away with a smile on their face. But if you start mentioning judgment, it's not very well received. And that is what happened to all of the prophets in the Old Testament and uh, even John the Baptist in the New Testament. Uh, when they started warning the people, their popularity went downhill. And that's the way it was uh, with Amos also. Amos was also unusual in that he was from Judah. Uh, he was from a town called Tacoma, Tacoma, uh, which um, 
I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but um, sometimes if you just act like you know what you were, you, you were saying, it, you can get by with it. But um, I like to be honest. But um, so he, uh, which was close to Jerusalem, and probably the sheep he was raising were going to be used in the temple sacrifices. Um, but um, he was called to Israel. In, in the northern kingdom to warn them. And so he was obedient to the vision that God had given him, and he set out for Israel. Now, at first, he was prophesying about all the judgment that was going to fall on the other countries surrounding the northern kingdom of Israel. And so they were just eating that up. You know, it would be like if uh, we heard a message today about, you know, an evil regime, that God was going to bring judgment on them. We would be like, oh, yeah, pour it on, pour it on. And But if somebody says judgment is going to fall on America, people get a little upset about that. And that's the way the people of Israel were. Uh, they were all happy when... Um, Amos came up to them, and he started telling about prophesying against these other countries, uh, Edom and all, that God was going to bring judgment on them. But when he started talking about their country, they became very upset, and they persecuted Amos. Um, and the northern kingdom of Israel had uh, almost every one of their kings were very, very wicked. And when we have wicked leaders, they lead people into immorality, into what they believe. It's a proven fact. Uh, sometimes a country is as strong as its leaders. And when you have immoral leaders, when you have leaders that um, are for the wrong, they call good evil and evil good, then first thing you know, the people start living like that. And as we had talked about with uh, Ahab and Jezebel, they influenced the people of Israel to worship Baal. And so they led the people into great wickedness, even child sacrifices, we have talked before, in sacrificing their own children to uh, Baal worship. And so they were a very, very wicked people, and they were ripe for judgment. And this was what Amos was trying to warn them about. Even though he was the most unlikely of ones to be called, he wasn't from Israel, uh, he was from Judah, and he wasn't from a line of priests or, you know, like I said before, uh, related to royalty, uh, being around the royal court. Um, he was uh, just a shepherd and a pruner of sycamore trees. And so, but God uses ordinary people. And sometimes he uses the most unlikely of people to do his work. Uh, people that, um, you know, you, no one else would ever pick them. Um, but God sees something in them, that they are going to remain strong to the vision that God gave them. And Amos was that man. He always remained. You know, I think God has a special love and a calling for shepherds. Look at David. Uh, he was uh, the shepherd king and what God had planned for David. And so, you know, as we've talked about in Bible studies, we learn a lot about people through sheep. And so I think that's why uh, God called so many shepherds to an important work. Uh, and even the trees that um, Amos pruned, uh, you know, God talks about the, the true vine and uh, that he prunes uh, the, the vines and the, uh, because he wants them to bear more and more fruit. Um, as I said, uh, Amos was just a plain, humble man. 
but God called him. He was hard working. Uh, you know, uh, the shepherds would take their uh, flocks into the mountains in the summer, and it was a year-around job because they had to, even in the winter when the um, flocks were in their winter pens and someone else was watching them while the shepherd would go and uh, plant grass and look for uh, fill up holes where they could fall and break their legs or, um, you know, uh, get rid of the snakes in that area or hunt the lions that were always on the prowl for them. So, um, it, you know, it was a year-round job, but Amos was such a hard worker that he not only took care of the sheep and prepared the fields for them um, during the off months, the winter months, but he also uh, pruned the sycamore trees and was a gatherer of them. So he was a hard-working man. And so I imagine he was a very strong man. And so he um, was able to handle the hatred and the persecution that Israel put him uh, through. God condemned Israel for five sins. And we're going to look at these five sins today. Um, one, number one was selling the poor as slaves. And that was common back then. Uh, you know, that uh, if they got into debt, uh, they could take their children uh, or take them and sell them as slaves, use them as slaves. Um, they also used slaves that they had got uh, captured in, um, in uh, battles, in war. And so uh, ex selling the poor as slaves. You know, um, slavery is just a, such a hideous, horrible thing to think of. And there's not very many uh, groups of people that haven't been used as slaves. Um, it's not just one particular race. Uh, St. Patrick uh, first came to um, Ireland as a slave. And then when he got his freedom, he came back willingly to preach the gospel. Uh, even Native Americans uh, captured people in battle and um, sold them and used them as slaves. So um, this has always been around, but God does not approve of it. And it is a horrible uh, thing, an indictment of a country. Number two, for exploiting the poor. Um, and we see this even today. Uh, the poor are exploited. Uh, you know, it's um, it, it, things like high interest rates, uh, even all of the high price of the gasoline now and the uh, shutting down of the pipeline. And, uh, you know, so many people lost their jobs. And, and then uh, now everyone's having to pay um, high prices for gas because we're, again, dependent upon foreign oil and what they want to charge for it. So, you know, it's exploiting the poor. The poor always have to pay the price. And uh, it's going to affect the poor even in uh, finding food, getting food, because um, the truckers won't be able to afford the gas. Uh, so the poor are still being exploited today. And um, so, you know, it, this is something like slavery that has always been. And even in today, uh, it, it's still going on, both slavery and exploiting the poor. Number three, perverse sexual sins. And we see this um, all over the world today. The most um, awful sexual sins um, that God strictly condemns um, you know, sexual relations uh, uh, between unmarried people, uh, sexual relations between two men or two women, or um, even with animals, perverse, horrible um, sexual sins, and God brings judgment on a nation for that. Number four, collateral for loans. And this, I think, goes along with, um, 
exploiting the poor. Uh, the poor, um, you know, would have to use as collateral sometimes their, their own coats. And uh, that, you know, the God does not forbids that. That is, um, you know, t exploiting them. And also, you know, the, the fact that they were charged high interest rates, and we see this today. Uh, the interest rates are going up and up and up. Uh, collateral was in uh, uh, high usury, high interest rates was uh, forbidden in the Bible because it exploited the poor. And then number five, worshiping false gods. And uh, we uh, saw that in Israel and Judah and all of the nations of the world at that time and also today, people are worshiping false gods. We see false religions all the time um, and more and more pagan false religions that we would have thought would have died out a long time ago. But um, no, people are still worshiping idols. And um, so, you know, in, in worshiping money and success and their jobs, not only just uh, false idols, but even uh, success and money, people are worshiping. So those are five, the five top sins that God brings judgment. And judgment was about to fall on Israel when God sent them in mercy a warnings from Amos and from other prophets. God never brings judgment unless he first sends warnings. And we are seeing warnings here in our own country. Look at the floods we're seeing. Catastrophic things are happening. Uh, you know, it, everything you hear about it, it was the worst storm of the century. Um, you know, it was the worst that has ever happened. And, you know, it, it's God in his mercy sending warnings that judgment is going to fall. As we talked about Tuesday, um, Noah, even before the flood for 120 years, preached without one convert. But God sent them warnings. And, and today in America, we are seeing disaster after disaster, fires, floods. Um, you know, 9-11 was a warning from God that judgment was going to fall on America for their sins of sexual sins and abortion and uh, exploiting uh, the poor, just the same sins that God brought judgment on Israel and Judah for. You know, um, Israel didn't repent. Um, they didn't repent. And just as Amos warned them, the Assyrians destroyed Israel. And um, the Assyrians were like the terrorists of their days. They were the Al-Qaeda and the ISIS and the Taliban of their day. They were cruel. And um, when they came in and took over a country, they would take the people out of the country and scatter them all over and then bring in other people that they captured in countries, other countries, and bring them into uh, Israel. And of course, as you know, we've talked about the, before, those became the Samaritans that the Jews despised. And that was the reason. Uh, and so those tribes of Israel are considered now the lost tribes of Israel. Uh, they were scattered all over. And only Judah and Benjamin remained the tribes. And of course, then later they were taken into captivity by Babylon, but were allowed to return. So um, even though Amos preached judgment, he also prayed for Israel. He wept for them. He wanted to see Israel repent. And that is the role of any true prophet. You know, it's not like, I told you so, I told you so. No, it's not that. 
It's that you're trying to save their souls and warn them to repent before it is too late. In verse uh, or chapter eight of um, Amos, verse eleven, it says, um, "Behold, the days come, say of the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord." And we're seeing that today. We are he- seeing a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. In many churches today, sad to say, but they are not hearing the gospel. They're hearing motivational talks. They're hearing little tickle in their ear talks. But they are not hearing the gospel. They are not hearing that they must repent, that they must surrender their lives to Jesus Christ, that they must live a life of holiness. People don't want that. Most of the mega churches today have a watered down, diluted gospel. It is a gospel of prosperity and of good health. And uh, God wants you healthy, wealthy, and wise. And we've already, you know, talked about that in another. That's a false gospel. So there is a famine of God's word. And even during the week, Um, A lot of people never open their Bibles. They'll go to church on Sunday, but they, they don't study the Word of God during the week. And if we don't study God's Word, we are going to be deceived. I truly believe that the Antichrist is in the world today. And he is only waiting for one moment, a disaster of such catastrophic uh, things that um, the people will accept the Antichrist. Um, You know, we've all been praying for Ukraine. And ever since this um, invasion of Ukraine by Russia, I have had bad feelings about this. Not only for what's happening to the people there. And yes, we know that You know, there's been corruption in the government of Ukraine, but who is it that suffers? It's the people. It's the people that suffer. And we need to pray for them. But I feel that this is like the beginning of the end. Um, This is not going to end good. And we better get, I'm not a prophet, and I'm not predicting anything. Please believe me, but this is just a feeling that I have, that this is the beginning of a downhill slope, and I do believe that my generation, um, that, you know, that we have saw Israel become a nation. We have seen Jerusalem come into Jewish hands uh, of fulfilling prophecies every day. And I think that we will see the Lord's return in my generation, in your generation. The ones alive today will see it. So I'm going to close here for now and um, pray. Pray for the people of Ukraine. Pray that the ones that are unsaved will be saved. We don't know what suffering they may have to go through. Pray for the government leaders. Pray that the Russians will see and say, no more. We're not doing this. We're we're not going in and destroying the people, invading them. So pray, pray, pray. And... um, we, we just pray that, um, that many people will be saved there and will get their, give their hearts. It's like, uh, the most Christian of all nations, and that's my dog again, uh, most Christians of na- uh, nations in Europe. No, Holly. But um, we, um, we, we need to pray that more and more become Christians. So I'm going to close for now. I pray went over my time. But um, Jesus loves you. 
and so do I. Bye-bye.